Good morning, everybody. It is the end of August, only a few days left in August. So I wanted to get out here and do my end of August garden tour. I hope that you guys are all doing well. It is a fairly tolerable morning this morning. We have had some really cool weather recently, especially last week, which I'm sure a lot of you did as well. We had some super cool mornings in the 50s, which was absolutely glorious, and daytime temperatures in the 70s. So it gave everything a little bit of a break. Our grass greened up a little bit. We do have a lot of dead spots that are gonna need overseeded this fall, but at least it's looking a little bit greener. So I thought that I would just take you through quick and show you what's going on here in my garden here at the end of August in Zone 7B, Maryland. We're gonna start out here outside of my gate today. I am absolutely loving how my Autumn Joy Sedum are looking right now. They are so big and looking so pretty. They are about to get that, that kind of rosy mauvey color that they get in the fall. Just love their fall interest. They are doing so much better than last year. Last year they just flopped all over on me, but this year they are looking sturdy, upright, just so pretty. Right next to them I have a patch of one of my favorite zinnias. This is the Raspberry Ripple Zinnia. I have these sprinkled all throughout my gardens. Fantastic zinnia. This is in the Perfusion series of zinnias. They are rabbit resistant, deer resistant, uh, fungus, milk powdery mildew resistant, drought tolerant. They are just so wonderful. I love them. And right behind them, I have my monstrous dahlia. This is the Thomas Edison dahlia that I've had to tie up because it was falling all over the place. I need to kind of deadhead it a little bit. I see some spent blooms, but just beautiful large dinner plate dahlia blooms in a deep purple super beautiful and prolific just kind of framing the entrance right here to my gate now let's go in and take a closer look at my main flower walk in here Rosie says good morning to everybody. This is Rosie, my four-year-old rescue puppy that we just got a couple months ago. <laughs> she, she loves doing that head turn thing. <laughs> but let's take a look right over here and you can see that I have some zinnias in bloom, which if you've followed my videos, you know the struggle has been real this year with zinnias and rabbits, but I finally have some in bloom looking so beautiful trying to battle out my Mystic Spires Blue Salvia here has completely taken over this bed. It looks super beautiful, but next year I am gonna have to do some thinning because right now it's about all that fits in this bed and I would like this to be more of a mixed bed. So I may have to go down to one plant. I'm not sure, these are actually three plants. So they have just, yeah, completely covered this bed, but you can see that the pollinators, the bees, absolutely love them. They're on them from early morning until late at night. I even see hummingbirds on these. I'm still seeing some hummingbirds, not quite as many as before, but I am still seeing some flying around. There is a desert sun sunflower trying to peek out behind the salvia. I'm gonna zoom in real quick. There we go let you see those closer. I don't want to get closer with the bees, but that is the desert sun sunflower. I have more right behind me that I will show you. These behind the salvia did not do great because they just didn't get enough sun. So next year, I know that they just need more sun back there. And I also had some other dahlias in this bed that got eaten down by the rabbits. Some Molina fleur dahlias did not ever have a chance to bloom, unfortunately. These zinnias are looking so beautiful right behind my boxwood hedge here. See that big bumblebee right there. So cool. And up my uh, painted obelisk here, I have this purple hyacinth bean vine. 
that is doing really well. It's made it all the way to the top and it's even starting to climb over my bamboo trellises right behind it. I'm so excited that I got this to grow last year. It was munched down by my rabbits. So this year I finally get to see it do its thing. It'll have those beautiful kind of purpley seed pods and flowers on it soon. Really excited to see that. As we walk down this way, you can see this clump of salvia has just taken over. Even with my bamboo staking down in there, it's just gotten bigger and bigger and just totally taken over this bed. So definitely need to figure out how to thin, thin that out next year. This is a Limetta hydrangea that is still looking beautiful. These do really well in part shade situations, which is definitely what it's getting right now from the crepe myrtle overhead. You'll see the other one that gets more sun is a lot more crispy. My crepe myrtle is sadly out of bloom and looking a little bit ratty. We had some really big rainstorms come through and just really kind of clobbered this crepe myrtle. Just, we lost some branches on it and when it was in peak flower, it it kind of got destroyed. So I feel like the flowering season was really short on this this year, but there is always next year, right? And right below my crepe myrtle, I had planted these coleus that are really taking off. I wish I would have added a couple more just to really fill out this space in here and maybe something with a little more pink in it instead of so much green. So next year I will have to play around with that a little bit. And this is my other Limetta hydrangea that I was talking about. You can see how much more crispy it is. This does happen with these and the wee whites that I have right behind me, if they get a lot of sun, this is just kind of par for the course. Coming around, I have a denim and lace Russian sage that is actually kind of out of bloom, but you wouldn't really know it because it, it keeps this purple color all season long. So it doesn't have as many pollinators on it, but it's still looking super, super beautiful. And right beyond my Russian sage here, I have another hedge of some raspberry ripple zinnias that I planted all along the border of the patio here. You can see that they are starting to take off so beautifully. They look so gorgeous. Absolutely loving them. So easy to grow from seed. I grew all of these from seed this year. Especially over on this side, they have exploded in growth. And right behind them, I have some purple basil that I also grew from seed that I was hoping was gonna grow tall like that one right there and just kind of create a hedge right behind this, these zinnias, the, the uh, raspberry ripple zinnias. You can see that they're back there, but they aren't really taking off yet. I mean, they have gotten bigger, but I was kind of hoping for a solid hedge. I did get them started late this year, so that, could definitely be a reason why I definitely want to give them a try next year again because they were really easy to start from seed and right behind them I just had planted this big patch of zinnias that are kind of struggling to take off I think that they just get a little too much shade with the crepe myrtle right behind them right over them I can see that I have one bloom that has started and another one that is on its way there's, there's some that are about to pop, so hopefully I'll get some late season color out of this patch of zinnias. And I just have a dahlia in the center here. This is another Thomas Edison and creme de cassis. And it still has not bloomed either, but there is a flower head that hopefully will bloom pretty soon for me. Moving over to my main flower walk, I have another desert sun sunflower that is about to burst open. This is a patch that I planted later than the ones that I showed you on the other side here, and they have really taken off. I am really happy with these. I have another round to go in here this week, but they are about to burst with flowers. 
they have gotten a lot more sun than the other side. So I think that's why they have done so much better. Right below them, I have a patch of Magellan zinnias that I've also battled with the rabbits that are starting to bloom. Unfortunately, they are looking pretty bad from fungal issues. You can see on the leaves from probably my overhead watering and just the humidity in the air. But I'm just gonna leave them for now because I've, I've fought so hard for them. So why not enjoy the color of the blooms? And they are right in front of these derunk boxwoods. These will eventually get about 10, 10 to 15 feet tall, but stay really narrow, about two feet wide, which will be really nice for this little section here along the fence. My fall in love sweetly anemone is blooming and looking so beautiful. The blooms kind of come in and out, but kind of a continuous burst of blooms here at the end of the season, which is so, so nice. Right behind that is this HS State Dahlia that I love. It has been so prolific for me this year. Beautiful, kind of almost like a tangerine orange color. And the pollinators love it because it is open pollinated so they can get to the center super easily. I'm definitely wanting to add more of these throughout the border this next year. You can see my Limelight Prime Hadrianja is starting to turn that rosy pink color. This tends to rose up before the standard limelight. Or I'm sorry, I don't think it actually does before. I think it just gets a rosier color. That's what I meant to say. It gets a little more rosy than the standard limelight. Looking so good. Right below that, I have another patch of raspberry ripple zinnias my herb pot. I'm losing another sage from my herb pot. I don't know why, but it's dying again. And then my black eyed seasons are kind of stealing the show with color for the rest of the border here. I did go through and add more bamboo sticking in front of my black eyed seasons to try to support them a little bit because they are super, super floppy this year. I do have some other varieties I'm going to be trying and showing you to see if I can get something a little more upright for this border in the future. That is a redemption elephant ear that has died about two times and come back. So both of my elephant ears have not put on the full growth this year, but hopefully they will next year. I'm going to try to leave them in the ground. They are down to zone seven. I believe it's redemption which I think I already said um, so that will be a good experiment to try for this year and then along the front here I just have the ladies mantle and some caspitamus nepeta that is looking a little scraggly right now hopefully next year these will really fill out a lot better and just cover a lot of the exposed soil in the front here my daisies have started to rebloom a little bit, which is nice to see. And I also have some coneflower in here that is out of bloom, some powwow coneflower. And I have some gomfrina starting to bloom finally. This has been really slow to get going for me. You can see a small little bud coming right there. I have more down the road here, but I think it just doesn't get enough sun in this border. It's really a part shade border here with the Rose of Sharon especially. So some things kind of struggle a little bit. My Mystic Illusion Dahlia is out of bloom but still providing some really nice interest with its dark foliage. Hopefully I get more blooms soon. Right beside this beautiful Helen von Stein lamb's ear and my little lime hydrangea right behind it that is also starting to put on its rosy color as well. You can see it's not quite as rosy as the limelight prime, but it's kind of more of a mauve color, I guess I would describe it as. And of course, we cannot forget the purple pillar rose of Sharon right behind all of the perennials here. Looking so beautiful. The pollinators absolutely love it. And we had gone through and cut these back because they had gotten so floppy and were just shading out all of the plants 
underneath them. So we did do kind of a midsummer cut on these. They are starting to flush back a little bit. I, they will be fine next year, but we will have to keep them trimmed so they don't flop over on us in the future. We're really getting into the sun here, so the lighting might not be quite as good, but I have more gamfrina. This is the strawberry fields gamfrina. So it is just a beautiful red that actually looks like a strawberry. And this is some spent foliage from a nephophia, orange blaze nephophia that is out of bloom. And then right behind it, I just have more of that repetition of pink cone flower that is out of bloom and daisies and black eyed Susans right behind it. And this is a fire profusion zinnia that I forgot to show you on the other side. For some reason, <laughs> the zinnia over here just has not rebloomed for me. I really have no idea why. You can see that it has lots of buds on it, but it has not been blooming for me. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but it is a really beautiful orange color. I personally really like orange in the garden. I just think it really pops and stands out. So I definitely want to grow more of these from seed. I bought these from my local nursery and they just weren't in the greatest condition. Um, but I think that if I grow them from seed, it'll be really similar to my raspberry ripple zinnias. So definitely want to grow that color next year. This patch of Black Eyed Seasons is really not looking the best. <laughs> Pretty um, thin and kind of ratty looking on its last leg. And then this is the Strawberry Fields Gamfrina right in front of some reblooming daisies. So it's not quite in full bloom, but you can see that it gets these really pretty just red um, flowers that actually have, my camera won't focus unfortunately here. Oh, there we go. It actually has little yellow specks that make it look like an actual strawberry. So I definitely wanna try to grow them again next year, see if I can get them to do a little bit better. And then these are my wee wee hydrangeas that you can see are definitely crispy, just like the limetta that I showed you right behind me. I have one bloom that pushed out that was new and fresh, which is kind of fun right there. This caramel hookah over here is looking beautiful. Really love that pop of orange right here at the end of the border. And then I have a patch of zinnias over here as well that are just starting to take off. You can see a bloom starting to come, a bud starting to open up right there. And then I have an orange bloom right over here. I believe these were an Oklahoma mix zinnia. Maybe some Benary's giant thrown in there. The Oklahoma mix has a, a smaller flower head, but they are supposed to be more powdery mildew resistant, which is why I wanted to try them. And our beautiful uh, red sentinel Japanese, Twombly's red sentinel Japanese maple right behind the bench, looking really pretty. Unfortunately, no hummingbirds to show you this morning but some mornings I'll be out here and they will literally just fly right by my head. So I think that they are definitely dwindling down and getting ready to fly south, but still so many beautiful things to look at. So let's take a walk over to my patio. I'm gonna show you some plants that I have and show you some of my containers. I'm just going to give you a little sneak peek of some plants that I have to put in the ground. But I wanted to show you this area because I think it looks so pretty. I think that I'm going to have to work on a grouping of pots for this little kind of corner right here on my patio. I love all the colors and don't mind this container right here. We need to clean that out and I'm planning to plant something different in there but I am just loving all of the colors. I think that it's so pretty. I realized I should probably clarify, I did have a Black Eyed Susan vine in this container right here in this urn, and I had been trying to climb it up my light pole here, but it just did not work. It ended up flopping all over the place. I think that if I had 
more of like a multi multi-tier trellis it would do a lot better with more things to support it and grab onto but it just ended up looking like a crazy mess and it was shading out all of the plants underneath it so I might be reworking this container a little bit but it just has this white bidens left over and blue azuretum and then this pink geranium so we'll see what comes out of this container here for the fall in front of our hot tub, I have these two Kimberly Queen ferns that were split from one fern. You can see how gigantic the ferns got. They grew absolutely beautifully and are looking great. Definitely a great way to save money. I love the Kimberly Queen variety because they do well in part sun, in shade, in full sun. They're just a really great versatile fern to have. Bringing you up on top of my deck, I wanted to give you an update of my hummingbird container. This has lived up to its name and attracted tons of hummingbirds. Unfortunately, I don't have any great videos because they move so quickly. Often when I'm inside, I'll look out and see them, but they absolutely love this plant right here. This is the Vermillionaire. It is a hummingbird magnet. They will fight over this plant. They just go absolutely crazy over it. it does great in containers. So you are just about guaranteed to have hummingbirds if you have this plant in your garden or in containers. This Persian shield has gotten so large that it has actually shaded out my geraniums. I had some really pretty pink geraniums in here that are not blooming but the Persian Shield is looking really beautiful. I have a blue adjuratum tucked in here and some alyssum that I'm really not crazy about. I think it just looks a little bit mangy in this container. So we'll try something different next year. And I just gave this fertilizer yesterday because my lantana have come out of bloom. They were a real pretty kind of orangey red color. And then I have some Magellan zinnias tucked back in here that have been doing amazing all season long. So definitely a great container that has offered lots of color all season and attracted lots and lots of hummingbirds. Up on my deck, this is where I tend to grow my seeds from containers. So these are all things that I have started. This is my next round of Desert Sun Sunflowers that I'm gonna put over by the fence. And these are some Dahlia tubers that I started, oh gosh, a few weeks ago. Um, but look at how good that they are doing. I think that maybe I will get some flowers by the end of the season, which will be awesome. And then I have some foxglove right over here that I also will plant out pretty soon after they put on a little bit more growth. I really wanted to give you an update on my grouping of containers over here. This is where I do tend to experiment a lot and just do a lot of single container planting and things that haven't worked out well in ground. I will move up here and see if I can get them to grow up here in a container. So, and if, if I don't know what to do with something, I'll just stick it up here. But this is a Kent Beauty Oregano that I love. This is my first year growing it. I think it is so beautiful. It's drought tolerant. It gets beautiful, tiny little purple flowers on it that are out of bloom right now, but it is just such a pretty ornamental oregano. I definitely will be doing more of that in future years. My Bordeaux Super Tunia have not done the greatest this year. I think honestly, because I just have not been fertilizing much this year with my hand injury. I injured my hand really badly in May from a head trimming accident and just have not been able to keep on top of things like I normally do. So I did lose one plant in there and the other two plants aren't looking the greatest. So I may think about replacing those with some petunias, or not, not petunias, some pansies here in the fall once they start to come out. I have a pretty geranium. It's a salmon color that I've overwintered in paper bags in my garage this past year. That's where most of my geraniums have, have come from, from previous years and overwintered. This is a Campfire, Campfire Marshmallow Bidens by Proven Winners that is a 
little bit out of bloom. They tend to come in and out of bloom throughout the season. And some nasturtium that I have kind of babied along <laughs> through the heat. Nasturtium don't tend to love the heat, but this one has survived for me. A really pretty orangey color with beautiful variegated foliage. This is a Jacob's Klein Bee Balm. I am telling you, the hummingbirds have gone crazy for this plant as well. They will go from this plant over to the Vermillionaire and back and over to my hummingbird feeders. It is definitely a must bee balm in general in your garden for hummingbirds. I have this marigold that I grew from seed that has really kind of exploded. It's just a kind of a basic French marigold. I think I got those seeds at the Dollar Tree. And some strawberries that have bounced back a little bit. They again were being eaten down by rabbits in my garden. So I moved them to this container. Some chocolate mint and strawberry mint hiding back in there. And this is a top blue planet ageratum that I grew from seed. Look at how beautiful it is. I love this ageratum. I lost all my other ageratum that I tried to grow from seed, but this one took off for me. So pretty. And some more plants that I grew from seed are this apricata cosmos. Look at that flower, isn't that so pretty? It almost gets an iridescent uh, kind of color to it. It's really hard to explain, but it's it's a purpley pink color and then it it kind of has these iridescent -y, um, tones of apricot that run through it and sometimes it's hard to see and sometimes it depends on the light but just a really pretty cosmos so this is the apricotta again I think I said that too but just a beautiful cosmos if you want to try something different and these are Procut red sunflowers. I have one that is starting to bloom. Well, that actually is in full bloom. It's just a little baby. Let's see if I can get a good shot of that. This is a plant that my daughter picked out that she wanted to grow. So I had to grow these for her. I was more than happy to do that. And hopefully we'll get some bigger blooms from this guy right here pretty soon. So yeah, super pretty. I also have, let's see, some Magellan zinnias that I had left over right here that will be blooming soon. And this is a tomato that I started from seed late in the game that is putting on some fruit for me as well. This is a dwarf tomato from Renee's Seeds and I can't quite remember the name of that one, but I'm so pleased that that is finally taking off. So that's just a really quick overview of how my containers are doing here on the deck at the end of August. I forgot to show you, this is Amanda Villa climbing up my bamboo trellis here that also has not taken off this year, unfortunately. But you can see it's a, just a real pretty pink. Last year, this really did well. I think again, because I fertilized it every like week or two, it really took off for me. But this year, just it's, it's struggling. <laughs> So lesson learned for next year. And I do have to tell you a story quick about the deck here and the hummingbirds. This is where we have our dining table. My husband was out here with some of his friends the other night and they were just sitting out here eating dinner. And he was sitting right over there in the chair um, on the right there. And I was sitting inside in the dining room and I looked out and there was a hummingbird flying right behind his head and I, I could see that he was a little taken back because they they will just fly right by our, our heads out here all of a sudden you hear this like buzzing sound and you can't figure out if it's you know a really big bee or a hummingbird but it was so cool and the guys who were here said that um there were a couple over here I guess basically fighting over the bee bomb right here and that they had seen more hummingbirds flying around here on our deck than they had seen all summer. So 
that was really, really neat and just kind of a testament to what these plants can do for wildlife and just attracting, attracting wildlife, attracting pollinators. You really can create your own little oasis, no matter how small or how big your property is, you just have to know the right plants to place. And I guess I should just give you a quick update on my veggie containers back here. I grew some veggies in these grow bags for this season and largely I would not call them a great success. <laughs> But I just really wanted to try growing some veggies. In the future, I have other ideas for this area. I would love to do like a potting bench right here. And then maybe another like low bench over here with a whole grouping of containers in front of that chimney wall, I think would be so pretty. But for now, I just think that it's really nice to utilize this space for something. So my jalapeno, I have three jalapeno plants that have done pretty well. Not as well as if they were in the ground, but they have prolifically produced jalapenos. You can see they're just everywhere. I do have to probably come out and pick some soon. I might make some jalapeno poppers. Maybe I'll do that with you guys. And I have these two dwarf tomato plants that do have a lot of fruit on them right now, but they haven't really produced as much as I was hoping that they would. So this is a good experiment. I have this sweet potato plant and cucumber plant that has completely taken over the patio. It just, yeah, looks like some kind of alien or something, but you can see that I have sweet potatoes. That definitely makes me happy. And I have pulled off some cucumbers about maybe four or five cucumbers not as many as i was hoping and you know i'm not sure if it's worth growing for just four or five cucumbers i have let's see i did not plant oh no wait, this is another this is another cucumber plant in here so i have two containers with cucumbers and then i did just plant some beet beet seeds in this container right here and my green beans have been a big bust this plant is a container green bean plant, but you can see that the, the plant has just been overtaken by fungal issues and really just producing teeny tiny little beans and just nothing to speak of. So they were kind of a bust. I might remove that plant and try something else for the fall season in there as well. So that's just a quick update on my crazy container uh, veggie plant, veggie pots right here. Let's take a walk past this grouping of plants, beautiful plants, and I will show you a quick update on my shadier border right here. And I'm just noticing I need to refill my hummingbird feeder. Wow, it is almost empty. Gotta get on that today. So this is where I tend to keep a lot of my shadier plants because as the day goes on, it's still pretty early in the morning. This whole border gets a lot of shade. So. I have just a grouping of pasta that I split from out front. This is, I think, just the Patriot pasta, basic Patriot pasta, and a camellia right behind them that will eventually get about six to eight feet tall and just really provide a nice backdrop in this space right here. Right beyond my obelisks, I have a row of Annabelle hydrangeas that are look, still looking really good. I tried growing some pink mink clematis up these obelisks this year. This one did not take off for me. The other one did a lot better. And a beautiful river of impatience that are finally taking off a little bit. I did not add osmocote to these this year. I'm trying to go uh, more organic back here. And so they really did not put on the size that they had last year. Last year they were, they were huge and they were so prolific, but we'll see as years go on and I keep working on the soil, that might change. They might continue to do better and better back here. This is the pink mink clematis that took off, but I did not add fishing wire because of my hand this year. So it really is just kind of flopping all over this obelisk obelisk so I will have to do that next year just to give it a little bit better support 
down in this corner I have some hellebore and a lot more hosta and ferns and some hookera. I'm trying to save a ghost fern right there that um, started to grow for me. I had put these in the ground a few years ago and this year I noticed that one was popping up again. So I, I'm trying to bring it back to life and protecting it under the clothes from the bunnies. I have some columbine back here that the bunnies have sadly eaten down once again. I was hoping that they would come back for next year. Some fox love that I started from seed right behind this little obelisk ball and this is a Wiggles and Squiggles hosta that I just put in. I love that texture. I think it's so unique and cute. And right below here I have a Roseanne geranium that looks like it's starting to put on some nice growth for me. So that is really exciting. And I just have a mixture of, that's a wee hosta and some Brilliance Autumn Fern. And I have some Blue Halcyon Hasta tucked back in here. Let's see if I can take you around this way. This was a Casablanca Lily right here that didn't really fully bloom for me, so I'm gonna have to move that. My Elegance Hasta, this is an Elegance Hasta that has really gotten huge. And this right here is the blue halcyon that tends to lose its blue color as the season goes on and it gets hotter. So it's not really looking super blue right now. And I had put in a whole hedge of Sweet Tucker Viburna back here. So my hope is that these will grow into a nice tall hedge, like maybe eight feet, and really give this corner some privacy. This is a Wula La Hasta that really has put on some nice growth this year. You can see those leaves are huge. And it is right underneath our Autumn Brilliant Service Berry here, which has been struggling <laughs> with apple cedar rust and just looking a little bit scraggly, but we're just gonna have to see how that does over the years. And then I really just have that repetition going on all through here. I do have some things that I want to add to this um, border down here and we'll definitely continue to work on it as the years go by. So not a whole lot of new to show you, just kind of updating you on how things are looking here in my shady border. As you come out from our patio up here by our hot tub, we have this little flagstone pathway with a perennial geranium planted to the right of it. And I wanted to update you on this purple hyacinth bean vine that I had planted on a video probably a month or so ago. I wasn't sure if it was gonna climb up this pole, but it has been doing fabulous. I think that it would be even higher, probably up to the top if it got full sun, but it kind of gets part shade back in here, but you can see that it's just really doing great. And unfortunately, I did plant one over on this side that the bunnies had eaten right here in front of my hose link. So this one is not really taking off, but that's okay. I was hoping that they would kind of create this archway and climb up the lights here. Ooh, that sun is bright. <laughs> and just kind of cascade over the lights, but you know, maybe next year I'll try it again and get an earlier start to see if I can make that happen. So I'm trying to grow some time in between the stones. I just really want to add ground covers to my pathways so that minimum dirt is showing and the time has started to take off a little bit. I've had it die on me the past couple of years, but this year I think I managed to keep it alive. So hopefully that'll spread throughout the pathway here. And this is a Winecraft smoke bush, black smoke bush, that is kind of, um, I don't know, I think that it just doesn't get enough sun right here. So it's a little more on the green side rather than that deep red side but it is supposed to you know, be more of a red color. And I'm gonna keep it real tidy, real um, low to the ground. It can get like six to eight feet tall, 
but I'm gonna experiment and try to keep it tidy in front of my hose link. And you know, if I figure out a different place to use it that would be better suited for it, I will definitely move it in the future. But for right now, I'm just gonna keep it right there. I'm gonna just bring you down our little pathway here. These are all green giant arborvitaes that are taking off, <laughs> looking fabulous. We might have to start trimming those soon. They're getting so big. Just back you up to our fence here. Right outside of our fence on this side, we have these two incredible hydrangeas that are looking great and a whole swath of sun patients. These are compact sun patients, red candy, that are doing wonderfully, looking super, super pretty. Just absolutely love the color on these and they just kind of look like a cloud underneath the hydrangea here. They just have this really pretty striping on them. Looking so good. I think that I definitely wanna add more some patience next year if I can. Maybe add some over to this side and just sprinkle them throughout my landscape. They are so good. They are rabbit resistant and they, they, they handle the heat fairly well. They do, if they're in full sun, they do need a good amount of water, but they have done really well, especially in a part shade situation in the extreme heat that we've had here. This whole side is definitely a work in progress. I always say I lost most of my zinnias to rabbit infestation and planted these really late. So they are not yet blooming and looking a little sparse, but I'm hoping to have some color hopefully by maybe the end of September, by middle to end of September, that would be great. They are right in front of some Sweet Talker Viburnum that we will keep into a hedge as they continue to grow. They get about eight to 10 feet tall. And then I'm swinging around over here. These are some more Autumn Joy Sedum that I split from my Autumn Joy Sedum that I showed you over by my air conditioner. Or actually, not split, these were from cuttings. I started them from little um, cuttings from my other sedum and just grew them in some plastic cups in water and they took off super quick. They are not looking the greatest since I just put them in this year. This one has kind of flopped and has kind of that bare open center, but I'm hoping that next year will be a much better year for these. And look at this, I have a honeysuckle. This is a sensation honeysuckle. I have another bloom. Typically these are out of bloom by this time, but I have a bloom and it looks like more coming back there. They get these red berries in the fall after they are done blooming which is pretty, it adds a little bit of interest instead of just, you know, green foliage. So that is kind of interesting to see. And really not a whole lot going on here in front of these Dragon Lady Hollies. I have this oh so easy red rose bush that I just put in this year that has taken off and doing fantastic. It is putting out some fresh new blooms, which is nice to see. And let's see down here, I had just put in this Ageridium a little bit ago, maybe, maybe a month ago. It has started to kind of spread and fill in, which is good to see also. And then these are more fire perfusion zinnias. Now this side has done a lot better than my other side. I guess they just get the right amount of sun. They are looking so pretty against my purple Ageridium. And just, some lavender that I had grown from seed that I cut back and some coneflower over there that I'm trying to rescue that has been demolished by bunnies also. We're just gonna do a full garden tour this morning and go around front and go up on my porch, just show you everything that's going on. Not a whole lot on this side of the house. We have the Laura Petalum and the Wagelia right here and a single denim and lace Russian sage. I hope to add two more and kind of create a hedge right in front of that Wagelia right there and just continue to add in some more perennials and annuals as the seasons go by. 
we have our hose right there and another laura petalum and right in front of there i had planted these fall in love sweetly anemone last year that are really doing great they have really filled in and eventually we'll just fill in this whole space and just continue to spread around which i really really want they are looking really pretty just kind of they they don't all open up at the same time they seem to kind of come and go as far as the blooms go but just a really nice addition to this late summer fall garden right next to the laura petal and we have three incredible hydrangeas i'm not sure if these are going to stay or not i just kind of stuck them in here last year and they really aren't looking the greatest they got real leggy um so I don't know, I may give them another year, see how it goes and decide if, you know, I want to move them to another location. But right beside those is our Jane Magnolia tree that I am really enjoying it being limbed up like this. We came in and cut a lot of the bottom branches off to really expose the trunk. And I just think it makes it look so much better. Our hostas up here are not looking very good. <laughs> These are more hostas that were split from the front porch. I think just more of those Patriot hostas. They're just really looking scraggly. These guys are gonna move. These are um, pur purple, purple palace hookera. <laughs> it is an older hookera variety and they just do not do well right here. They are not growing well and filling this space in nicely. So I'm gonna be thinking of something else to put all in front here in front of these Hasta and the Jane Magnolia, but these, I'm just gonna move out back, I think into my shadier border to see how they do back there. And this is a patch of lamb's ear, just your standard lamb's ear that flowers. My Helen Bonstein does not flower, which is why I love it. And it also does not spread quite as prolifically as this one. This one will take over a flower bed if you allow it, but I do like that silvery kind of pop of color that it offers right here. And I really do like it against my sun patients right here, which I am gonna go show you next because they are doing so well for me right now. This is more of the red candy variety that I showed you over by my gate and the orchid blush. These are all compact sun patients and they have completely filled in this whole front area, which was my goal. Absolutely love them. Sorry about the horn in the background, but they just look beautiful and they are tucked in front of some boxwood that I just put in this year that eventually I'm trying to grow into some tight formed balls that will get a lot bigger than they currently are and peek out behind these sun patients. My husband did go in and trim back the Nandina back here. We have five Nandina that we are looking to relocate or remove this next year. Don't mind the cracks in our porch there. It's just kind of exposed all of the imperfections, but he was getting so tired of their kind of mangy look. So he went in and shaped them. So now they are quite small, but they are looking tidier but he also was thinking that they would be easier to move in the fall when we decide to do that. So well, that is why those look that way. And I wanna step behind me real quick and show you the sun patients around my service berry as well. So this is a view of our porch and this is a autumn brilliant service berry that we have right out here in front. Just love the way those sun patients are looking and I carried them down here underneath the service berry. These have not done nearly as well. I believe the service berry just really took up a lot of water and they were really hard to keep on top of as far as watering was concerned. You can see I almost lost one back there that isn't even flowering. And then I also tried to interplant with Ageritum and they also just did not do well, except for two right here. There's one here and then one right back there. So I had hoped that these would really just fill out with the Ageritum and the Sun Patients. It didn't quite work out that way, but we do still have two months left. So maybe by the end of those two months, they will be looking a lot better. But that is just a view of the front porch here. And since I'm doing a full tour, I'm just gonna take you up on the porch and show you how those containers are looking also. 
This is a container that I had planted back in March. It has really taken off this um, grape. I think it's grape punch super bells. It's a proven winner's plant has really exploded and is really just about coming down to the ground here. Just very prolific. I already got it back one time and it's already grown that much. So a little too big maybe for <laughs> the rest of the plants, but um, hey, I'll take it. Still very pretty. My angel wings is starting to fizzle out. Unfortunately, I did hear that these don't always like the heat of the summer, so it's not looking its best. And these are more pink geraniums, beautiful pink geraniums, and a lemon coral sedum that has also kind of exploded and taken over. I'm not sure if I would use that again in a container like this because it has kind of taken over that whole side of the container, but very vigorous grower for sure and so let's take you up on the porch and just show you how my containers are looking please excuse the water rivers here i just watered these plants so they are dripping in water right now this little grouping is doing really well these are the proven winners begonia these are the pink um double is it double up pink I think they're called I have three plants in this one container and I've already cut them back one time just kind of trimmed them back lately away from like a ring doorbell there so they weren't completely blocking the doorbell but oh, they are so beautiful on this porch I really have been enjoying them and in my bird cage here I just have a wire vine that has begun to spill over and out looking so pretty another hosta from the front porch that i have in this old crock i like to intermix a lot of like old antique things from family family heirloom type stuff in my garden decor and a longa burger pie plate <laughs> as a saucer that's a good trick if you want to keep in more water just use pie plates and let's see over here, I have my Boston ferns. Now these guys do prefer shade, so this porch gets a lot more shade, except for that one on the end. That gets a little more shade than it probably likes. They always do super well, and I have another wire vine in this little terrarium that is beginning to just kind of spill all over the table, which is exactly what I wanted and this beautiful little combo over here some more double pink begonias the proven winners rose variety and some vine some uh, i always want to say vinca it's ivy just really beautiful variegated ivy and one of my favorite plants to use on the porch is the streptocarpella it gets these really pretty purple trumpet like flowers on these long wiry stems and can be brought in as a house plant over the winter but I just love using it in my containers on here I just think it adds such a whimsical little touch and these are just some white sun patients in an old crock again and a tiny little blue mouse ears hosta that I think is so cute in this little container so Things are looking really pretty on the porch here at the end of August. And I need to show you the other side of my door. I forgot to show you the, that grouping. So in this direction, I still have my star here, but I did get some command hooks to hang it from the ceiling up there. I'm gonna try that little trick. And I had brought out my house plant. This is a fiddle leaf fig from inside it's just in a proven winner's container but it has put on so much growth since I brought it out to the porch I'm going to do that every year now you can see it is pushing out new buds it has gotten a little bit of it looks like some fungal damage or something on the leaves from being outside so I'm gonna have to spray that once I move it inside and then I already trimmed this once, but this is my topiary. This is a Eugenia topiary that needs another trim. It has been growing like crazy. And 
This is one of my favorite containers on the porch also. Another use of the Strepto Carpella and this beautiful chartreuse fern. I'm not sure the name of it. And then this is actually a white um, New Guinea impatient. They do better in full shade. So this little corner does not hardly get the sun like my sun patient over there. So I chose to use a New Guinea impatient right here. So loving that combo, loving how things are looking on the porch. It's such a really, just a wonderful relaxing spot to sit, especially when it's on the cooler side out here. Super beautiful. On the other side of my driveway here on the corner, I have this beautiful container that has all of these pink geraniums in that I overwintered from last year. Look how pretty they are. I just think that they look so gorgeous right now. I am really happy with how they have done this season and I have just a spike in the middle for a classic look. And this is a diamond frost euphorbia that is looking really pretty and whimsical. This ageratum is probably my best looking ageratum. Look at how pretty that is. It is so gorgeous. And this gets part shade, so I'm thinking Adriana might like part shade, but so, so pretty. I did have a Tradescantia vine in here that really did not do anything. It's kind of hiding back here. It really got shaded out or something. And then a Creeping Jenny back in here that is kind of towards the back. So overall, really happy with how this just adds a little special touch to the corner of my garage door here. I have a orange I think it's a rutabagia that I got last year hiding right here I really want to figure out how I can collect seeds from that and grow some more and just really disperse it throughout this whole area right here I think would be really pretty against this dwarf glow blue spruce and right behind that I have my oh so easy red roses these are not looking the best so I'm kind of embarrassed to show them but they have really gotten eaten up and are dealing with some kind of fungal issues on the leaf and I never deadheaded this, these this year because of my hand injury so they really are looking a little bit messy. Unfortunately I think that they would look a lot cleaner if I would have deadheaded them. So technically you're not supposed to have to deadhead these but I think I prefer them deadheaded anyway so maybe I'll get to that this week or um next year I'll, I'll just leave them alone who knows it won't see what I have time for and then I have this Merlot redbud that is really taking off this year I really love this tree and another incredible hydrangea that is also not doing the greatest it's really stretching I think towards the sun underneath the redbud so it's really flopping over and then I wanted to show you quick these begonia. These are the same begonia that I have up on my porch. And they are also looking really pretty right along this pathway. But I do think that next year I would like to carry my sun patients over here because they are a slightly different pink. And I think the sun patients would do really well right there. And then we're almost around full circle as we come up around here with my, um, boxwood a little boxwood hedge in front of my hydrangea this is the winter gem boxwood and past my red roses here my serendipity allium are sadly just about out of bloom but really looking pretty still the bees still love them pollinators love them another good one to add around my garden I may think about splitting those next year and here we are, back to the beginning. And that's the end, ending with my sunflower and this beautiful view of my main flower rock here, my favorite part of my yard. I still have so many dreams and aspirations for this space, for my whole property. It's amazing of what you could do with such a small property that I hope to get to here slowly over the future, slowly work on projects. But I do hope that you enjoyed this 
little walk through my yard, through my gardens, just to see how things are doing and how things are looking here at the end of August. I hope that you guys are doing great, that you are getting in some garden time, enjoying some of the cooler weather on the horizon, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye.